Well, the Trump presidency begins where the Obama presidency began and before him, George W. Bush, what to do with Vladimir Putin. Past presidents have looked to reset the Russia relationship, but it has ended with more tension, military threats, spying, meddling and fears of a return to the Cold War. Now Trump, who has spoken fondly of Putin, is confronting the same dilemma. International security expert Alan Dupont suggests Putin has played a weak hand very well and a new strategy is required. He joins me now. Pleasure to have you here. I just want to get your thoughts first of all, and then we'll move on to Russia more generally. But you had a little bit of a look at the Trump press conference there, the allegations that are surrounding him, unverified, yes, but certainly in the headlines. From his style, from these allegations, from the scandal, from the way that he handles these things, what can you take away from that to how he may handle big international issues in his presidency? Well, I think it's pretty clear that uh, Trump is going to be a very different uh, president to his predecessor, Barack Obama, who was reflective, calculating, thoughtful in his responses. And Trump often Trump shoots is, from the hip. Exactly. Trump is like that. We already know that. And I doubt very much whether he's going to modify his personal style and behaviour much as president, to be frank. There will be some modification because his advisers will obviously urge him to... Um, to curb some of his excesses, but he's got a very personal style. That's the way he is. Um, he figures that he's got here on his persona, so why should he change? So I don't think we're going to see much difference in the future. Now, Russia, Trump conceding, yes, Russia likely did engage in cyber attacks during the election, both parties. We know that Russia's been accused of the same in the Brexit poll in Britain, in the Scottish referendum. There are other elections coming up across Europe. What is the game Russia is playing here? Mm. Well, I think to understand what Putin is doing, you've got to understand the sort of person he is. He is an old-style Russian nationalist mm. who, like Trump, wants to make his country greater again. And uh, he's done it quite effectively, playing a weak hand well. Uh, he's, he's exploited the opportunities that have been presented by the United States' preoccupation with many other crises during, you know, across the world. And Obama's clear reluctance to get mm. involved in external engagements in the way in which his predecessor had. So that was the opportunity for Putin to exploit uh, the weaknesses as he saw in Obama's strategy. Uh, and then he used his military very effectively, which he's modernised over the last 20 years, mm. as basically the primary instrument for advancing Russia's national interests. That being said, he is overseeing a very weak economy. Uh, he is someone who has at times been an international pariah. He has probably played a weak hand very badly, but what strategy do you need to deal with him? Mm. Well, OK, let's get it in perspective. You're quite right that the Russian economy is slightly smaller than that of Australia. Mm. Right? So it's, it's completely overwhelmed by the size and the strength of the US economy. So that constrains Putin and what he can do. Um, but how do you deal with a guy like Putin? I think a deal has to be cut. And I think Trump is actually right here. But can I just, can I just come in there? Sure. We've all heard this before. Um, Obama is going to reset the relationship. George W. Bush famously looked into Putin's eyes and saw his soul. Now Trump is saying we'll have a new beginning. And it ends in tears. That's true. But I think what uh, Trump probably would do that Obama didn't do, or Bush before him, is cut a deal with Putin that's workable. So I think Putin is amenable to a deal. He doesn't want to have the US as an enemy. Mm. They, are, they ha do have a lot of common interests. Okay, so the deal has to be some understanding whereby the US respects Russia's claim to influence over its strategic backyard, um, and including influence in the Middle East, which it traditionally had. That's potentially giving up a lot, though, isn't it? We've seen what he is prepared to do. He's redrawn the borders of Europe by reclaiming Crimea. There have been fears that he has other uh, aspirations more broadly there as well, and he has been decisively involved in the Middle East. Would a deal also not be seen as potentially weakness? I don't think so. I mean, you've got to look at what the US can get out of it. So from the US point of view, do they want to have an adversarial relationship with Russia in the, for the continuous future. I don't think they do. Mm. So there are, there are reasons why the Americans in their own national interest would uh, benefit from a deal with Russia. For example, the last thing the Americans want to see is a, an alliance between Russia and China against the United States and its interests. That is where Russia has been going because it felt it had no alternative. So that would be one thing the US could get out of it, be clear-cut 
and definitely in the US's interests. And I think some kind of accommodation around uh, Russia's legitimate security interests mm. uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in central, uh, um, in, in central uh, Europe, mm. uh, in the Baltic republics perhaps, that a deal could be cut and I think uh, that's where Trump wants to go. Now the problem is that his, this whole relationship with Russia has become a lightning rod for dissent mm. in the United States from opponents who want to bring uh, Trump down or believe that his uh, election was illegitimate. Well, as we've seen, Trump, has, uh, Putin has seen off many other presidents. Now we'll have to see where it goes with Trump. Fascinating times and good to have you here as always. Thank Pleasure. you.